But I want to make something very clear. Even though I'm a member of parliament, I, I, I am not a politician. I'm an activist in politics. And that changes the game. Um, we know the realities of black people. When we talk about recognition, it's important that we recognize both the good things and the bad things. When we talk about recognition, I'm talking about where black people fought and died, first and second world war, for Europe to preserve their civilization and to fight for their freedom. But yet black people are still fighting for the freedom from those people that we fought and died for their freedom to maintain. Doesn't make sense. We know what's happening to us today. We know, for example, the, 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 what we talked about, the, the racial profiling studies that are, that are all around Europe, that in certain countries in the UK, black people will stop eight times more than white people. We know racial profiling in France. We know racial profiling in, in, in Sweden. We know it exists, that black people are harassed, regardless if you are an immigrant or if you are a PhD holder, if you are a politician. I'm a politician. Every time I go to the airport, I get stopped, even though I have a diplomatic passport. This is a reality that we face that we need to recognize that it is not acceptable in 2018 that we've been living here throughout history and contributed immensely to the development of this continent, and yet we are treated as second-class citizens. We claim to be first-class democracies, but yet we have second-class citizens. That is not okay. When we talk about justice, we mean that every individual living in Europe today, regardless of your background, regardless of your race, you need to have access to equal justice as everybody else. We know, I see my brother sitting there with Woody Jallo's t-shirt. I don't know how many of you know about Woody Jallo, a black brother that was killed in a police cell in the most brutal way, born to life. And yet, when they go to court, the police are let, uh, let go free. You, you, you see these incidents happening every year. And that's one thing or two things in common. Most of the people that are victims of justice, vi victims of, of these hate crimes are black people. And the second thing is the perpetrators would do it with impunity. They would not be punished. We know this. These are facts. We have the stats now. In Sweden, where I come from, we wrote a report, the first of its kind, the Afrophobia report, where we, it is shown very clearly that black people are victims of hate crimes more than any other group. We see the disparities in the labor market. We see the disparities in education. We see the in every single part and aspect of the uh, society. We see that black people are at the lowest of this hierarchy. Not because we don't speak the language, because we do. Not because we don't know the culture, because we, we do. We've been living in here for a long time. We're not newcomers. We know the culture. We speak the language. We know the tradition. We know how things work. But yet, when we stand in line and say we want to be treated like you, they say, no, go back to where you come from. Now, as a policy maker, I think it's very important for us to also focus on what kinds of policies we need to put in place in order to protect our communities. And these policies has to be a range of policies that will cover not only you know, our political rights, but also our socioeconomic rights. We know that a lot of us are qualified. I, I, I used to work at a university, and I see people that come here from African countries with two, three degrees, and they have 20 years of experience. And yet, when you apply for a job, as a cleaner, you don't get the job. That's not okay. And yet we say we have an aging population in Europe, we need people that can come and work, but when people come here and they have the ability and the intellectual to work, you say, no, they cannot get a job. Why? Because they look like the way they look like. That is not okay. That's what we're talking about. And we have the data, we have the stats. So the question is, what are the politicians willing to do? That's why I asked the question to the, to the lady from the commission. And in 15 seconds, answer that. We need to have a framework, a policy at EU level that says to every member state that when you go back to your own country, you need to make sure that you put in place policies that will protect the rights of black people and the black community, socioeconomically, politically, culturally. That's what we need because we had the same kind of system for the Roma and we've learned from the Roma, we need to put in place that structure in order to be able to feel protected, in order to be able to feel as part of Europe. If, we, if equality is the basis of the European Union, we have not noticed it. It's about time that we get our part of that equality. Thank you so much. <laughs>